Welcome. You are now tuned into the Textually Active Podcast. Whose cheeks got clapped? Oh. <laughs> I thought that was the title. My fault. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Textually Active, your weekly dose of conversations about friendships, relationships, situationships, and all the ships in between. I'm Rez, and I got Meezy with me. Meezy Boulevard's here for prison. <laughs> and I got E on the boards. Yep. Um, and Jazz is in the background, hanging out. You might hear her laugh. She don't got her headphones today. <laughs> but we back. It's 2020, niggas. We made it. <laughs> we might be starting 2020 with a war, but I mean, hey. I'm for it. As as in typical black people fashion, we just keep rolling. I'm for it. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't think I ran no where Winston-Salem, North Carolina is. Fuck. No, they don't. Sorry. My friends don't even know where Winston-Salem is when I tell them that's where I'm from. They didn't know, but they didn't also didn't know where Delaware was at. Um, yeah, because they were friends too. <laughs> so, that you're might, wrong. That might be a lie. You're wrong. You're wrong. How was your new year? How's the first three, four days of the new year treating you? I don't know. I just got here. You feel different? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It's my friend. I just only been out here like three years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Uzi. <laughs> e, how's the new year going for you? Uh, working. Um, that was a little bit different, but um, it was a good time. Okay. Oh, uh, you worked into the new year? Yeah. Yeah, we went to a party. It was dope. Um, open bar. I was enjoying myself. Um, had a couple drinks, and he was working. Yeah. What was the party? It was great. Anyway. Okay. Meezy, people were looking for you. Um, apparently, you yeah, were I supposed got, to be I at got, this party. Yeah, I got... Um, somebody rolled up on me three times. Asking for me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. One person said that he would actually um, shut the whole shit down if he didn't pop up in three minutes. But then he must have forgot. Yeah. With that open bar, it was a lot of drinks flowing. I mean, I like the fact that uh, y'all are telling me this, but nobody's concerned for my danger. Like, listen, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody thought about that perspective. Oh, that they actually want to hurt you? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, two people were, were looking for you. Like, oh, where's he at? And the other person was like, oh, where's he at? And then when you found out that you might not be there, then that's when it kind of escalates. So that person could have been the one that you need to watch your back for. I, I should have asked that person's name. We'll I'm never sorry. do that. We'll never know. We'll never know who it is because mm-hmm. we ain't friendly black people. Okay, that's fine. Um, how was your new year? Uh, it's cool. We New here. Year's Eve, what you do? I went to work. Fuck that job. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's survive until we get another <laughs> one. But we still gonna go in and clock in and get that eight hours or 12 hours and collect the paycheck because... 2020 don't sound like a broke year. It don't. <sighs> Something about 2020 Listen sounds bars. rich. It sounds rich. It. Sounds like opportunity. Sounds like money. Mm. Cha-ching. Oh, it just especially feels- especially since uh, twenty dollar bills are like one dollar bills now. Oh, oh yeah, that's I true. see what you did there. That's true. That's uh, true. But it also feels like uh, I don't even. I I wouldn't have known had the calendar not changed. Okay. I don't know the difference. So I'm glad to have you guys here for our first episode of the new year. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, make sure you follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Textually Active Pod and at Textually Act Pod on Twitter. I'm ready to get into this conversation. Y'all ready? Let's bust it down. All right. So let's get it. It's been, I don't know. If you listen to this episode, you know how much I value my friendships and how much I value my relationship. And how those two play a role in my life. Mm. Like, I kind of feel like friends and significant others are kind of like on the same playing field if you're doing it right. However, there are people out there that believe that their significant other is held to a higher standard than their friends. And they end up treating their friends like shit because they just value their relationship so much more. And I just wanted to come in here and kind of break down how we feel about that. Like, where do you place your value in friends compared to your significant other? So here's my thing. Question number one. Do you try to keep some type of distance between your significant other and your friends? Mm. In the beginning, yes. Okay. Well, am I answering or are you just... Yeah, yeah. In the okay. beginning of the... Go for it. We're assuming who comes first, though. 
Are your friends there first before your significant other? In the beginning, <gasps> yes. Okay. That's funny. Like it, it so just, we're it talking just, beginning of relationship. Friends yeah. have been there. Right. right. Okay. As it should. And I feel like that, you know, the person, like basically your friends are going to be there if that significant other or that potential winds up being a piece of shit. Mm, right. So, all right. Big dub. Big dub. Right. So the thing is like, you have to kind of like, it's like a balancing act as time goes on. Right. So if you look at it, like your, your friends may hold more weight in your, like in your life. Right when you first meet somebody new, and then as the stuff goes on, you, you trust each other. Different, you know, different things happen, and then basically the weight of that significant other starts to hold more weight. But I think that it should never tip to one side overall. But you know, but if if there's like certain things, like you know, if you're going to decide to pay your mortgage versus go out, clearly, you know, if if your if your significant other is like, no, don't do this, like I would hope that. People just use common sense, bro. That is extreme. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, but <laughs> that we is extreme. We got, no, we got, we got those things. What if it's there. a business investment? Listen, some people. What if me and my friend want to go into business together? Listen, some people wow out when they have those three checks in that those two times a year. Where you get three checks in a month every other week. Some people they they wild out. One of them Add me next post- time, man. Because one when of them I get supposed- yeah, checks, supposed to wild out. Extra money. Yeah, but you gotta pick which one you gonna wild out on. Remember that if you ain't pay the rent on the first, can't wild out with the first one. Right. <laughs> but it you- may be the one in the middle, or it may be the one that comes at the end of the month. Facts. But you gotta add that budget up because sometimes it don't be extra money. It be just the amount that you need to get you through the extra weeks. I forgot that I hey, used some of the money. From my paycheck this week or last week, and I was like, "Oh, I use some of it because you got the little program. You can take some out. Mm. It's just an advance, just in case you need it." And I needed it, so then I looked at my check stub on Thursday, like nine hundred. Oh well, we in here. We about to get robbed. <laughs> then when the deposit hit, and I went, "Oh, this ain't right." And then I was like, "Oh shit, I used that money already. <laughs> I, used that money <laughs> I used that money already." Yeah, that, that happens, man. Damn. But all right, so yeah, but that's that's the the biggest thing. It's just like. I think it's a balancing act, like over, over the course of time. I like what he said, but I also think it should it should be degrees, bro. I think it's certain things that your friends are your friends and her friends are her friends, but at sometimes we can bring. I can go into your world or you can come into mine, but not every time. It's not always the case, isn't that? Isn't that? Uh, then uh. Um, it was a Diddy or uh, Biggie was like, my friends can meet your friends. Right, 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 We can right. hang out every weekend. Exactly. Uh-huh. So sometimes we can do that, but sometimes I need you to know that me and the boys about to go do nigga shit. And I think that depends on the appreciation that you have for your friends and how much you value them. Because you could be that person, that friend that always brings their significant other around. Right. And now your friends are looking at you sideways because sometimes they don't want to hang out with Jazz. Right. They just want to hang out with you. Or, and now your um, friends are like, damn, yeah. like every time we can't even talk the way we normally talk because she here and talk the way you normally talk mostly it's about them it's like yeah I got this new da 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 for this or right, just something right. to you know to boost them up but it's weird when they there or the hoes yeah you can't talk about the hoes can't talk about you, the hoes you can't get that old T on your old nigga yeah. cause they be like see, oh, he's this oh, old nigga <laughs> <laughs> did you see this <laughs> he in rehab dog no, no you send, don't get that T send that in a DM yeah, you got it. yeah. <laughs> but then your time is different I and I think it's important as you move into your relationship to have that separation between your friends and your significant other. Because being a friend, I, I be missing that time. Yeah. I don't yeah. want your nigga around all the time. Right. Right. Or the, or on the other side, hey, I don't want to be around you all the time. I'm about to go do this thing. And take a break. Yeah. yeah. I found recently, I mean, as I got older and as our relationship matured more, we just kind of became attached to each other's friends. So this time when we went to Delaware, of course I want to see his friends too, but I made it a point that you go see your friends, I'm going to go see my friends because being as though I'm, we're long distance friends, whenever you see me, I don't want it to always be me, With you, E, yeah. and your boyfriend. I want us to have one-on-one time. So yeah. I made it a point, a point to do that. And I don't think a lot of people take that into consideration when they have friends. It's like, or when they're in a relationship, it just meshes and becomes one. And I mean, you need you need space yeah. outside of it. Yeah. So, but don't hide your don't hide one from the other. Yeah, because that looks weird. That might that's look that it feel it might go a little shady. 
Ooh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't can hide. I, can, I, can, I, can I bring up some, some, something old? Oh. Can I bring up some old shit? What's old? old? All right, so. Uh, you hit Riz, bro? No. What? Oh. What? Oh, no. A Riz hit Juice, my fault. No, listen. So, uh, you know, I've mentioned it before on the, on this podcast that when me and Riz first met, you know, we start talking and then we stop for a little bit. And then basically. Are you bringing this in the 2020? I'm, I have it's a point. All right. Okay. So when we started talking again, I basically did not tell one of my friends that I started talking to Rez again because she was there when Rez did me dirty the first time. I mm. didn't do you dirty. Yeah, you did me kind of dirty. No, I didn't. It was kind of corny. Okay, whatever. <sighs> um. So yeah, and and that didn't really work out. In the best way So how did you Handle this situation Because now you have A friend that you're Really close with And a significant other You're trying to get to know How do you make This thing clash That's uh, my segue You uh, just um, You rip the bandaid off Ooh You kind of just Bring it up Like hey Yeah I'm talking To you know Rez again And things are looking Pretty good uh, We've been talking For a couple You know a couple Of months now I um, think I want To get with her and mm. then, then you kind of like, you know, you let them kind of like say what they have to say, and then you kind of like bring them all in together. That's a tough thing too that people don't realize. Um, put strain on their friendships. I've been the friend that's seen my friends get dogged out, like just treated bad, and then they come back to me, and each time they say. Oh, I'm back with such and such again. It's looking good. Now I still got a smile in that nigga face. And it's kind of like you don't want to be that friend to tell her, you know, you're wrong. You keep doing this. You dumbass bitch. Like you need to you need to wake up yeah. because then it, it puts a tension between you guys. So as a friend, you need to learn how to let your friends be dumb and tell them. You know, and support them at the same time. So your friend did a good job, like not bashing you and make me feel bad. Let your friend be dumb is funny. Yeah, I mean, you do have to let your friend be dumb. Did you hear what she just said? You did a good job of letting your friend not bash you. (laughs) 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 Well, your friend, no, I said his friend did a good job at like accepting him and not bashing him for his decision. Yeah, but that's what friends do. From what I know, friends it. don't friends don't like make it a point to embarrass you. I might embarrass you one on one, like even in a significant like the the uh, cool thing to say is why don't niggas tell their homies that they got a good girl? It's like no, we do do that sometimes. It ain't my fault that they don't listen. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I will walk up like, bro, you're wilding. In my experience, I feel like men hold their homies to a higher standard than they do their girlfriend. I don't think so. I think so. I don't. I think so. They let they they let their homies get away with a hell of a lot more. Yeah, and I just uh, exactly, and then they let their girlfriend go. So I think they hold their homies to a higher standard than they would their girlfriend. I don't think so. The the nigga made a whole song about it. Who? Ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. Yeah, but that was snip, snip, ho. You you supposed, but you supposed to, bro. Like when the I whole bros before hoes kind of bros before hoes is a thing where when uh, I don't even know if I should be telling this online uh. it's got cold <laughs> but bros before hoes is in a situation where unless this is your girl then yes bro L- guys have a different level of women in their life well sometimes somehow the signals got crossed and niggas take bros before hoes including girlfriends too. And they'll go hang with they niggas, hit the street every Friday with they niggas, girls sitting at home, miss holidays with they with they girl to be with they niggas. And it's kind of like, where does the cutoff come where your girlfriend gets treated with that same I don't like, all, like? I don't like all this misogyny in the room. Okay. Because there's definitely, women definitely have a hoe friend. Who okay. really, who be wanting to engage in hoe activities, mm-hmm. hoe activities, mm-hmm. and bring the gang with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So much space. So you can't much. hoe alone. It's dangerous hoeing alone. So you ain't going. <laughs> when I know Tasha thinking, "Hey, we about to go out tonight," and Tasha gonna say it's lit. I already know. She in the group chat twerking. She got her shot. See what I'm saying? I know some hoe shit about to go on because y'all about to meet at Melissa house, and we then we going out. Oh, it's some hoe shit. Oh yeah. Oh, oh y'all gonna hookah first before y'all go? Up? Oh, no. hoe shit. Hoe shit going on. Yeah, and we putting it on Snap too. 
Mm. All right, bro. That's so what, the thing is, and that's why we breaking up. The thing about, <laughs> close, close friends, huh? right? Yeah. The thing about niggas though is that <laughs> <laughs> I learned that close friends is just so black people can say nigga on Instagram. So white people can or say nigga on black, Instagram. Black people, okay. or because no, every, so black people can show weed on Instagram. <laughs> right, like, and so white people can say nigga on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Don't get exposed. People will screen record your uh, close friends and share it with people. Don't think you low. You're not low. It ain't safe out here. Oh, shit. Know that. It ain't Stay safe. safe. It ain't safe. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that men, if a man were to hear from his homeboy that his girlfriend was a hoe before they linked up, mm. the man is then going to go meet with his significant other because I don't want to be biased towards everybody else. It's not just men and girl. Girl and men is men and every. So I'm going to just say a man and his significant other can be together All and his homie and yeah. is not just men and girls being yeah. and men and men being friends. Okay, so we're, we're going to keep we're it. We're We're going to keep it light. Yeah, okay. Right. So a man will hear some information about his significant other from his homie and then go break up with his significant other behind it. A woman, on the other hand, We'll hear that same story from her homegirl or homeboy or whoever about her significant other and go talk to her significant other about it as opposed to just breaking it off first. And she might not listen to the friend anymore. So that's where I feel like the difference is between genders with friendships and relationships. But I think that's a like a personal thing. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the guy in this scenario would have had to talk to her before he decided to break it up. So it ain't like I just, oh, she was a hoe? Man, fuck that bitch. I ain't going home. Like, <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. That's very extreme. <laughs> I think I think you have to talk. I think people talk to each other about it the same way. Because we know a bunch of, we know, we know that girls know that niggas was a hoe because she watched him and still chose to date him. And so then the friend will be like, girl, he doing you like that because you knew it. And then you just say, okay, but I love him. Right, because you, you, you get him, you know, so you're losing the way you get him, right? Because that nigga hit the bottom. He done hit the bottom, now mm-hmm. you love this dog-ass nigga. Fold your ass up like a chair. <laughs> That's a good one. Whoa, <laughs> shit. Like, a, a beach chair. He's like going be- deep, guys. Like, yeah, like you about to go watch the, the fireworks. Oh, wow. Like you just packing it up, See folding up the think. beach towel. All right. Yeah. So in that case, what is the difference between a friendship and a relationship? I don't think there's a difference. I think. Uh, so I are just, they equal? I think they're equal, but they're equal. It's apples and oranges. You can compare the two because they fruit, but they're not the same type of fruit. Listen, man, relationships are just like, uh, are just friendships on steroids. Boom. <laughs> Right, all right. You so, hit the nail on the head. Right. Are they? Are they? I mean, yeah. Because like, if you think about it, like all it is when you have the relationship, it's Fuck like, it, look, I'm, I'm because I'm friends lose their mind. Think, Fuck it. A relationship yeah. is a friendship on Wait, meth. Res, what? Because Whoa. people lose their fucking mind when they fall in love. Well, yeah. And 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 you might get hurt and you still jump like, girl, I'm and back. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're going to get fucked up and you're going to wake up like, ah, I'm back, niggas, it's meth. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, I'm just trying to stay with you, man. <laughs> I just want to be in love, man. Yeah, you got it, babe. That's right. Bro, y'all got to cancel y'all Netflix. Y'all watching too many do- <laughs> dope, dope uh, documentaries. That was Dave Chappelle, relax. man. Y'all got to relax. Shout out to Dave. Shut no, but there. um, shit. I like so, what is the steroid aspect of this? All right, so yeah, so basically, if you think about it, like whoever's in the relationship, that person is in a friendship with somebody that they're just more pressed over, right? Like you go through the same the same things that you might have in a friendship, but it's just it just it's just at a higher level, right? So you might necessarily you might go on a trip with a friend, right, and. You know, I don't know, like it's about splitting everything down the middle, right? Then it might be a situation where it's like, all right, well, one, you know, in a relationship, one person's paying for the hotel room, the other one's paying for the flights. Like there's just different levels, different, different uh, scenarios that you'd be more willing to be exposed over or more willing to be, you know, um, vulnerable over. That's because I ain't fucking my friends. Something about having sex bust you wide open, and that's where the meth comes in. Relax. So, but, <laughs> but, but the thing is, though, I want to argue the fact that I feel like that you, other than the only difference that should be between a good friendship or someone who's truly your friend and someone who's in your relationship is just, it's just sex. 
Like I feel like you should have and is and then, then there's like uh you know a dab of common sense in there. You know what I mean? Like there's a certain stuff like or some some couth, some couth. You know I what I mean? But the fucking the dab of common sense is let go when you fuck somebody. Like the whole narrative about guys and girls is that girls are emotional fuckers and guys can just fuck and go away, right? So I'm sure it's niggas in the world who could fuck their friends and still be friends with them. We don't have to be in a relationship. That don't make my girl. I'm fucking her, but we cool. We go to we go to we go to dinner together. We go to movies. We hang out. I fuck her, and then I go about my business. But because of the thing about no, you can't like emotionally detach from somebody after you fuck them. That's where it lies because we don't know we, one of us has feelings for the other because we fucked. Right. But we still friends. So I think that's the same. I think in a relationship, you can't, you cannot treat your significant other just like a friend. And some girls, I, so I, so I disagree. Some girls do be having sex with their friends. So, too. I did, well, so they'll get drunk and start licking and sucking on each other. I've seen it. I've seen it. Not in real life, but like on the internet. All right. So allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> All right. So, but my thing is like, I feel like they're like. Sex aside, because like clearly that's like the the big differentiator, right? Right. But there are friends, and and clearly my significant other, I would give my last dollar to. Like there are people who are out there that I hold to that same regard. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is we have not made a difference. Like, would you you give your you would give one of your friends your last dollar the same way you give Rez your last dollar? Right. If Rez before you and Rez live together. When Rez was like, you know what, we, we've talked about it. I'm moving to live with you. You let her stay. Would you let a friend stay with you? Not in the same room. I had a one bedroom. Not in the room, nigga. Relax. <laughs> but if they wanted to sleep on, yeah, they wanted to sleep on your couch. Would you let your friend sleep on the couch? Yes. To move to North Carolina to go to school for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> same. So we can't even say. That I don't even. So what I'm saying is, I don't know what the difference is. I can tell you. I think the difference is that. And it's not really a big difference because, all right, I'll say it. So when you get into a relationship with somebody, the end goal is normally like staying together forever, building credit together, buying a house, having a family, having this intimate relationship, best friendship kind of bond. So that's the biggest difference is that you guys share like money. You might share bank accounts and experiences like in an intimate way. But on the other side, with friendships, you do want your friends to be in your life forever. I've never met somebody that said, hey, I'm just going to be friends with you for the first four until years. spring roll around. <laughs> okay, so spring, then we're going to have to figure some shit out. So intimacy is what the difference is. Yeah. That's fair. I think so. Which is, which is uh, sex. But you're still intimate with I mean, your friends. I mean, that's, that's the, I mean, but that is the ultimate sign. Wait, Jazz just let out a big sigh. Um, do you want to add on? Uh, I was going to say intimacy and sex. Intimacy and sex is not the same thing. Sex is more like intercourse. Sex, and I do feel I mean, like sex can be intimate. But you can be intimate yeah. with your friends too. Like if you guys are cuddling one night and this may lead, may or may not lead to eating pussy. What kind you, of friends you do you have, my bit? G? Yeah. Do you need a hall pass or something? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> to fuck one of your friends. Oh, good question. Oh no. Oh God. This is this, oh, this no. is not a this is not can, a thing. Tangent. But can friends be on the hall pass? No. Hell no. How are we supposed to keep being friends as a group? Because if I'm in a relationship with you, I'm friends with your friends. Now I know your friend that has sex and y'all supposed to go out on Friday night or go on a bro trip or bro and girl trip or whatever. Bro, you're making this podcast a lot more gay than it has to be. I just want want you to respect my agency. (laughs) Babe, you got to. Okay, listeners. When I say things, I'm not only talking about E. Mm. I'm talking about my past experience. I do have a life outside of E, not mm. outside of our relationship, but like, you know, not intimate, but I do have a life outside of him. Like I see stuff on the internet and I experience stuff within my friendships where I know things that are going on. That's a good disclaimer. He is a straight man. Good disclaimer. However, I know niggas be gay and that's fine. <laughs> so I don't want to limit my views and my opinions strictly off of my man. I don't know if that could be the title of this. <laughs> I know niggas be gay. That I shit know is funny. Gay, so they be fine. intimate with each other. So niggas can be intimate. It All doesn't right. have anything to do with he is a straight shit. man in a relationship with a bisexual woman. Mm. And that's it. That's that on that. Mm. So another thing people will Pretty argue cool. 
and <laughs> friendships and relationships is that their significant other gets more chances than the friend. Facts. How many chances do you give your friend to fuck up? How many times on the timeline did we see 2019, January 31st, if I don't text you tomorrow, you cut off, or I ain't taking in new people to 2020, Wait. cut the fake... <laughs> Fake shit off. Like, you just she, cut your she friends said, off? She said the wrong day, but... Like, <laughs> oh. You said January 31st. December 31st. I was going to say, damn, we get to go into the new year, and then you get to the end of the year. The butt? Cool. Right. We, we just float it right through. But here's my thing, bro. A friend... <sighs> Most, I think our demographic of this podcast is in a middle 20s and above. 25 and up crowd. You know, grown and sexy. I hate that shit, but it sounded good. Grown and sexy is nasty. Grown and sexy is Mature. 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 No, I don't know. What that I don't know. Millennial. Right. Yeah. That's a new term. All right, whatever. <laughs> so, at 25 and up, you're not making new friends, really. You a damn lie. Like friend friends? I like mean, you I be making friends. But do you make friends that you, you know, at some point we hang out enough that you know my entire story? Yes. What are you doing? What are you making friends for? You, if you guys don't share stuff. You better than me. <laughs> we made friends. Yeah. At 26. But here's the thing. We, we don't have that many. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just we're just we're just pointing at each other like, yeah, that's what happened. They know your whole story. You just described me, Meezy, ain't your friend. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, so when they come to giving me chances, do you think that I got? I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you right now. You on strike two, nigga? All right. Strike one. You done you 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 strike one. We knew, and I, and I got you back off that. I knew, bro. But you know, I knew. You on you on. You got a few more strikes. I get my friends chances now. I'm a yeah. fair friend. Yeah, but how many chances are you gonna get E? You get the same. See? Did y'all hear? Hold on, wait. See what I'm Pause. Did you hear? Oh, so oh, Kevin, I, I didn't. I didn't. I did not know I got this many chances. See, see what I'm saying? <laughs> he still got all his strikes though. Kevin Hart's wife was on the documentary um, that just came out, and she was talking about, you know, I love, I love him. He gets chances. He gets like three strikes, and the internet said so. Kevin Hart basically got two more times to cheat yeah. <laughs> publicly. Yeah. yeah, but that was funny. But no, in a relationship. Every strike doesn't have to be cheating, but in a friendship, it de- it depends on what the what the offense is. Right. I'm not just gonna start off and say you get three chances if you really do some fuck shit, and we just can't come back from that. What is the fuck shit though? Because I feel like uh, because we don't have to talk to our friends as much, so that's not really like a a de- uh, demerit. But I think if my friend stole from me. We got to have a real conversation about it. Yeah. I, uh, the irony, that Kevin Howard thing. Oh, yeah. My friend steals from me. We've got to have a real conversation about it. hmm And so, depending on how we felt, then we can get past it. If my friend is uh, making up uh, vicious rumors about each other, about, or about me behind my back Or better yet Sharing your secrets With other people When it's coming back to you Like damn Like I told you this You're the only person I told this And I'm hearing it again From somebody exactly. else Exactly So then that means We need to have a conversation And we might not get back from that Mm-mm. I think that That crosses into trust So Cause your friends Can't cheat on you That's one reason <laughs> Well cheating would be it, it depends on What kind of friend you are Some friends are jealous I'm not so much jealous But I don't fuck with people Who don't who fuck with people who don't fuck with me. But there, I don't think there's a lot of people who don't fuck with me. But what if we, what if you. So I would be a little upset if my friends was fucking with somebody that didn't fuck with me or did me dirty. But what if they was already friends? I mean, like, that's when it becomes a little, you're a little lenient. Like, I don't want to be that jealous friend that tells you. You can't fuck with that bitch anymore, but I would expect you to say you're not fucking with that bitch no more because your loyalty is a little stronger with me. Damn, bro. That's where loyalty is weird, bro. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, like, if we were all friends at one time, like I was watching this show the other day, and uh, the guy broke up with his girlfriend. One of the friends wanted to fuck. So he actually asked the other friend first, like, yo, how would you feel if me and old girl got together? And he was like, bro, that's weird, but you got to go ask Ben first. So he was like, all right. So then when he told Ben, Ben felt a type of way. 
But then Ben got mad at the other friend, like, you knew about this? And he was like, bro, when he asked me, I told him to go talk to you. So it's like, bro, how, we both friends, but how can I show my loyalty to you? Right. So I think it was, I mean, he gave the other friend the opportunity to go talk to him before he said it, because it would probably sound worse coming from him than it would the guy who actually wants to fuck his girl or his ex-girl. And we all friends, so it's weird. But I think it... In friendships, there aren't boundaries as far as cheating, but there are things that you can do that would be equal to cheating. Mm. Like lying about hanging out with somebody that you said you wasn't fucking with that we have ultimate beef with. Like they done fucked my nigga or tried to fight me and kill me and you hanging out with the ops. That was the ops. Yeah. Then I feel like that could be like a similar offense to like hurting your feelings. But um, other than that, no. I, I think... Everybody should get equal chances to have a a turn in your life. Like, so we'll say trust is one. Okay. So the friend breaks your trust or your significant other can break your trust. Um, Another thing would be like lack of attention. I feel like that's a reason why a friendship or a relationship could end. I think E brought that up and I don't still don't understand. Why Uh, friends break up over not enough attention? Yeah. So, um... Best way, and it's gonna sound, um, I guess, uh, I forgot the word, but it's gonna, it's gonna sound trash, basically. Um, I like trash. F- relationships are like plants, right? You have to water your plants, right? You have to give it sun. Apparently, you gotta, you gotta talk to them, right? So that they can bloom and grow fresh and essentially, you know, grow to be able to do the same for others or for other plants around them. So a lot of times, you know, that's where the whole negativity thing comes. I feel like for the most part, people say, oh, if I cut you off, it's just because you just don't have enough attention amongst each other. Right. So the same way if someone in a relationship might break up because you're always at work or you're always, you know, hanging out with your friends or you're always doing everything else but showing them that attention. Right, then that can kind of cause that that riff in the whole thing. Yeah, get it a little bit. <laughs> so people will say, "So sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off." So, but but I I have a feeling I think I know where you're going with it, right? So there's not to say that you can't. You like thing is like if your friends have an understanding, right, of what life is, right? I have like friends that I don't have to speak to every couple of weeks or it could be a month or so but whenever we do talk we're right back like it never like like nothing nothing's ever been wrong you know because we just understand each other's like circumstances right right we like you know my, one of my homies know that i'm you know i'm running a business so I, i'm you know i'm engaged like i have all these things going for myself and i know they have the same thing things going for themselves too but we make the effort still to try to, you know, if I go visit up north, you know, I make, I make, I make a, 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 a like a sincere effort, a sincere effort to like either go to their house or like find ways that we can link up like later on that day or right. during that weekend and stuff like that. But that's the perspective that I understand. But it's uh uh uh, it's the six nine rule that I don't get. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I'm not uh, Man shout Six him out he, the, he coming home rapper. Yeah he coming home He be alright What you did was some fuck shit But whatever So when he explained to Angie What his name was He wrote it down on a piece of paper He wrote a six and a nine Okay He showed her this way And he said What do you see She said a six Then when he flipped it He said What do you see She said a nine So then He flipped it again He said Well I see a six Then he flipped it again And I see a nine Right So if I feel like every time that I reach out to you, E, I have to reach out to you, right? Yeah. I come to you. I get. I give all my energy to you, but you don't reciprocate it, right? So then in my head, it's like, oh, he might not fuck with me. But on the flip side, you may feel like every time we talk, you gotta come to me, right? And so now we don't know uh, perspective. It's perspective. Right. We don't know who's being the bad friend in this relationship. Well, our, we kind of talked about this before. Like in some scenarios where friends, like the the bad friend is the one who didn't think about who didn't send a text. Damn, you don't fuck with me first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like because that always happens, right? There's always that one person that's like, oh, like damn, like yo, you didn't fuck with me. Like damn, like I hit you up. It's been mad long. But the fact is, like 
you took that long too. Last episode, we talked about things to leave in 2019. Let's leave that in 2019. You going to know if I don't fuck with you, okay? You going to feel it. You going to feel it. Don't sit up here and text me, oh, you don't fuck with me no more. No, I, I don't. If you have to text that, I don't fuck with you anymore. And that's it. But to like, if you haven't talked to your friend anymore, first of all, it's offensive to greet them like that. Like, damn, like, what the, what the fuck you mean I'll fuck with you? Like, I, I've been literally out here busting my ass. I had the worst week of my life. Car probably got towed, got my ass kicked. I don't know, I just ain't have time to text you. You can't even talk about, damn, you don't fuck with me no more. I mean, like, the pampers, the like, the shit all oh. over this. I got oh. herpes this week. Like, just fuck that. Yo, can we, can we put this out to the, to the listeners? Um, if you are, um. Not a person of color. Oh, I thought you were going to say her- herpes positive. No, if you are not <laughs> oh, a person. Oh, sorry for you guys. If you are not a person of color, does like does do you guys do that? Do you guys do the the text or the phone call? Like, damn, you don't fuck with me to your friend, or is it just enough thing? I'm just I've been trying You're to curious. figure that out. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Say they probably say, "Bud, where you been?" Uh, hey, Bud. Bud, long where time, you been? Long time no here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bud, where you been? No, but I think you. The beef comes from lack of attention when you start getting those subliminals or you start catching those subliminals. Like, can't tell a bitch nothing. Are you on their Twitter and they just like tweeting about you? And you're like, damn, they talking about me. And y'all haven't talked for a while. And then it turns into beef. I don't know. For some women, but for it happens who, but like that. But it's for who, though? For some women, it happens like that. You know, a hit dog will will holler. But let's and and that's on both sides because women will make up a beef. They will. <laughs> they will make up a beef with somebody. They will. They don't even know who they beefing with. <laughs> For real, sometimes you're just trying to get a tweet off. You felt like that years ago, and you're just like, eh, bitches ain't shit. And your friends see it, and y'all haven't been speaking. Now y'all beefing. Yeah. So the tension can turn into a breakup, well, a friend you... breakup, or so, a relationship breakup. So that's where you decide to cut it off. Yeah. If we start beefing, we got to cut it off. Yeah. Ooh. Well, it depends on how far the beef goes. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're taking low blows about like my lifestyle and only things that you would know about me on social media, or it's getting to the point where we're talking about send, send your location, drop a pin and we about to fight. Like, I don't think is any coming back from that because it is, it goes to show like you always had some type of hate in your heart for me. So question, I mean, I'm curious, this never happened to me, but say your, your friend knows that you, um, that you pick your nose, right? And you eat your boogers. <laughs> right. And basically they they sub they subtweet a sub whatever. Hate hate a motherfucker that eats their own boogers. <laughs> right. <laughs> the thing is like in in this scenario, only nice. no one else knows unless they know that you eat your own boogers. Could that be a, like an offense to say, like, all right, I'm not fucking with this person anymore. Because it's like, technically, they only know about your lifestyle. How long but ago was, did I pick my nose in front of them and eat my boogie? Oh, uh, uh, okay. So you're saying, like, if it just just happened. Yeah. And okay. This one time. All right. And they this, see it, and they done seen it. We were sitting in the same room, and I was like, damn, I still got the boogie fresh on my mouth. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. I almost threw up in my mouth. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. They just sit down like, your, yeah. sitting sitting on your tongue that like, that a, uh, like a so mint strip. <laughs> so oh, like a Listerine strip. <laughs> <laughs> like ever like done it and like like only on. only that one piece of your tongue is fresh. And you using that same hand to stripe. Oh, to stripe. oh. So you got a little streak. On what did shirt. you? But do you address it? Yeah, I'd be like, damn. Why? I mean, why you put my business? She won't. But, like, but, 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 no, but yeah, but the thing is, like, yeah, if they didn't at you. I mean, I still think it's it's still trash. I think it's shady. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean and of course, we're talking about like subliminals is trash. Yeah, like we're talking about like, but they if, fun. Like if. Uh, like the word, like you know, we're just being funny about Sometimes it. Sometimes you sub sweet just to see if a motherfucker paying attention. Ooh. It's kind of like an iceberger. You'll throw the subs out there, damn near, and catch yeah, it. And then you really get your shit off. You ever like be? You ever be on the outside looking at two motherfuckers sub each other, yeah. and you get all the tea from it? Yeah, Ooh. piece it together because you know they be thin. Let me go to date. I don't be. I don't be caring, page. bro. Like I just be like, all right, who gives a fuck? Okay. Right. So if I miss it, I missed it. So like, <laughs> I missed it. But if I saw it, I know. All right, I got yeah, one yeah. last reason why friendships and relationships may end. Mm. And it's the big one. It's that green monster. Not money. a boogie. The money. No, jealousy. Oh. Mm-hmm. Of each other? 
people be jealous. Oh. People may be jealous of the time that you're spending with your significant other. Your significant other may be jealous about the time you're spending. Your friend may be jealous about the way you look, how you live your life, et cetera. Have you ever had an instance where you were jealous of uh, the relationship your significant other and your friend have? Oh, like if they start? Um, like they might be too close. Um, I'm assuming it's opposite sex or or same, or, or, same really, or same orientation. It don't really matter. Like because you might know your friend is the hoe, but now your whole friend is rubbing off on your significant other. So, are you saying that <laughs> as a boyfriend, Listen, uh, the the whole friends have a place in this world too? They do. As a boyfriend, but not near my significant. You're other. jealous of your significant other and their friends' relationship. Yeah. No. Okay. I haven't. I mean, I want Eric to have friends. No, 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 no. Are you jealous of like if E and one of your best friends have inside jokes between them? Um, like they that close, they cool. No, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing: people make <laughs> did jealous. Just, did you just taste kombucha? People, no, <laughs> yeah. People make the word jealous sound like it's a thing that's not supposed to happen. It's so nasty. I mean, we've all seen Selena. That bitch was jealous and jealous. The lady into, that kills the body. <laughs> But so, we're not talking that level of jealousy, okay, so, guys? Oh, are you, are you talking about Selena, Selena? Yeah, <laughs> we've all seen Selena. Jealousy called a body. We're talking about just that little tingle in your, <laughs> in your heart. Just a little. Yeah. We all get a little jealous oh, that's sometimes. that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> jealousy caught a body. Jealousy did catch a body. But um, R.I.P. Selena. It ain't funny. But um, Tell your estate to stop. Fucking holding you out. If I see one more uh, crop top t shirt with Selena picture on it, it's over. Her and Tupac. But yeah, I do think everybody has a little piece of jealousy in them. And if you in that room, y'all in the room together, and they kick in about a joke that you don't know, your eye is going to twitch a little bit. Mm. And don't act like it's not. You're going to be like, wait a minute. And you might talk to Boo later about it. Like, what was that joke that y'all was saying? What's the joke? Like, what's, what's the joke? Nigga? So in that emphasis, who do you go to first? I would say your man or your significant other. Oh. Be like, what's up? Like, I was thinking you'd probably go to the friend. And say what? Stop joking you with should, my man? You should know better. Like, like well, I'm I, really, I mean, you I mean, see what I'm saying? Like, relax, bro. That's my girl. Relax. You a little too hands on with my my girl. Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I, I, that's because weird. I feel like I, just for me, it just feels like thinking about my situation. My friend, I've known my friends longer. So if I I can come with your friends, you know you can pretty much say whatever to a certain point, certain degree to your friends, and they know. You know what I'm saying? Like how how I feel? Like, bro, you a wildin'. You mm. gotta relax right now. Okay. Versus my significant other, I gotta still sleep with her. Like I gotta go to bed with her. Mm-hmm. So if I have this our, our conversation right now, we're gonna fight about this, and we're probably gonna fight about this for a couple of days. Yep, in the house. In the house. And then you trying to figure out why she keep playing Summer Walker all day. <laughs> what about um, <laughs> jealousy in a friendship? One friend being friend, like jealous that you have other friends? It's hard to say that somebody is jealous because people don't like to admit it. I don't know Big if facts. any of my friendships ended over jealousy, and I don't want to put that on anybody. Um, have I ever, have I ever been jealous of a friend? Not so much jealous, but maybe just kind of wanted some of the things that they have, but it wasn't like a, a hate behind it. I've never been jealous of a friend, but I have wondered, like, you ever like think about what the dynamic of your friend circle is? Okay. Like, so like. Like what, what makes y'all friends? Yeah. Like even you take like the four of us, like. Everybody in this room probably talks to each other the differently. Mm-hmm. Like, like obviously, the significant others talk to each other the most. But you and Jazz might talk to each other mm-hmm. a little bit more than me and you do. Mm-hmm. And me and E might talk to each other a little bit more than me and you do. But then Jazz and E probably talk to each other more than you and Jazz do. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I always wonder, like... How, like, where does that come from? Like, 
Like, damn, I thought I fucked fuck with y'all too. Like, somebody talked to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just like weird. That will be another scenario when friends will get jealous of other friends. Yeah. So I've been there too. It's like, damn, like you, you hang out with them bitches again. Right. Again. Right. But it has been. I'm the one that introduced you to them bitches. And yet, y'all still go do shit and don't even tell me about it. That's true. That's true. So, you, when you were discussing that, you brought up something and triggered me. I will say that I feel like friends hold more secrets than the person, the significant other. Facts. About the person that they're dating. Facts. Um, I just feel like, especially if you were friends with that person way before the relationship started, it's some things that yeah. they just got to take with them. Yeah. You know, everybody ain't been a saint. Everybody ain't been a virgin. Right. And the friends <clears throat> may know a little bit more about that than and, your significant yeah, other. Yeah, and you also don't, like... My friends wouldn't know what my sex life is like with Jazz. Now, they might know what my sex life was with the bus now. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, you should have seen her. She was damn guac walking from a mile away. Mm. She was throwing that nick. Oh but gosh. they wouldn't know that about Jazz because I guess that's a that's a, a intimate thing. <laughs> so I guess, like, there's certain things you set aside for aspects of a relationship. I feel like there may be a listener out there just saying, you know... I don't. I hold my my marriage or my not even marriage, but my relationship a little higher than my friendships because my nigga go to sleep with me, he wake up with me, we struggle together. Okay, all right, we get it, we get it. We know it's people out there like that, but I'm just saying from our perspective, I just don't like we, you holding your husband to a higher standard. Just means he's probably cheating on you. And just take a look and <laughs> go through the email, sis, and <laughs> just evaluate. How your friendships, <laughs> how your friendships are going in your life, Check how that's box. working for you, and and come back to us and let us know how that's working. How is it working for you to keep putting your nigga on a pedestal or your significant other on a pedestal right. and letting your friends just off to be the down wayside, there, like, yeah. whatever? Like I'll see you when I see you. Because how's people, that working for you? Because people fail to realize, bro. When if this this significant other thing don't last, you gonna need a support system. Mm-hmm. So you probably need to start. Even this out a little mm-hmm. bit, like just because your husband cheat on you and you stay, don't mean because you don't you ignore your friends. They gonna stay. Girl, think back on it. I'm talking to you, sis. Think back on it. Why are you and your friend not speaking right now? Why didn't Ooh. you text her Happy New Year? Oh, is it worth losing a friend over? Yeah, she stole Most your. Most time it's not. Well, she stole your Chanel bag. She ain't never returned them knee high boots that she borrowed, and she put a picture up on it with them on on New Year's Eve. It's all right. Forgive her. People be forgetting. Buy her a pair. Shit. <laughs> Buy yourself a new pair. Damn. Buy yourself a new pair. Damn. Forgive your friends. Stop cutting your friends off for dumb shit. That's cool. Uh, I hate to see it. Yeah, and don't be upset, fellas, that there you always be the guy that got to pay for old boy when he go to the club, bro. <laughs> you knew that. That you knew that before. Like we, y'all kept going. Mm-hmm. Once it happened three times, you kind of know that's the di- that's the dynamic he had. You know he got three kids. Right. Come on, right? He gotta, right? He got to pay his baby mom. I mean, if that's the weed, Them man, kids is growing. If that's the weed, guy, just keep smoking his weed. Yeah, smoke his weed for yeah. free. Yeah. You know, take care of your friends. Right. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break and we'll be back in a moment. And we're back. So. For our final thoughts, I want to do like a kind of quick fire about the situations where you would cut your significant other off or your best friend off. All right. So in these scenarios, I want to know who you guys would cut off. All right. All right. So the first one is your friend keeps coming back to you about information about your nigga. She's after all- after an investigation, the nigga. Okay. All right. After a quick investigation. What you got? Um, if I have to pick one, cause yeah, if the ig- investigation come back and the nigga wasn't doing shit, we just gonna dead that. She had a hunch. She went in her gut. I, I respect it. So you're saying that your friend would have to go? No, we no, just, no, no. we gonna so drop he, it. Yeah, your yeah, significant yeah, yeah. other would go. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So technically, the significant other would more ne- likely never, to never be knew, go. never knew, right, 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 right. that Meezy knew about it right. anyway because okay. he right. did his investigations in the, in the background. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the the nick the nigga, well, the significant other would be first to go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Same uh, for you. Um. Yes. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna do some investigating too, and if the friend is bringing me cold information, 
we gonna have to have a serious conversation. Like, come on. Like, what are you trying to find? Like, why are you trying to break us up? Ooh. Um, but Ooh, if yeah. it comes back that the information is correct, uh, nigga got to go. I feel it. Well, it depends because I said earlier in the episode I gave him a couple strikes. You, it depends you, on. Yes, what you, you did, and it's <laughs> and it's it's on tape. But if we had to cut somebody off, he going first. All right, the next one is uh, they beefing. They hate each other. Just cut all everybody off. So the thing is, I'm so I have not gone through this before. I choose me too, right? But but the thing is, I have been in a place where I kind of let both sides know about themselves, and so y'all need to figure this shit out, and then I kind of like protect myself. To protect your peace, right? All right, so you find out that they're having sex with each other. Who gotta go? We, both uh, of them in pieces. All oh, three of us are about bad. to be in heaven. What do you mean? Oh, everybody got that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. letting, I'm airing this out. Nobody gets forgiveness. Nah, we airing this okay. out. They don't get two, two more strikes. We'll be at heaven and oh. Nod War will be asking us what happened. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> your man or your significant other is steady, constantly talking about your friends. Like, bad. Like, fuck that bitch or fuck that nigga. He don't got shit. I don't know why you hang out with him. So... I feel like if my significant other has bad energy like that, I, I think I would potentially like cut that person off. You might got a point. I was sitting here thinking about it, and then I had to like justify like if if what if he said what if they say it and it's true and you understand that's the dynamic of your relationship. Like that nigga is broke. <laughs> So then, See, I mean, but he's but got then, negative. She got negative energy because she keep talking about my friend like that. Right. But it's also true. So, but, but if the thing my, is about me that, and my but, friend have a better bond than right. me and this bitch, yeah, I might have to let her go. Yeah, yeah. right. Because it's like, what the fuck does it matter to you? Sorry, I didn't mean call her bitch. At a certain point, it becomes nagging. Like, damn, like you, you ain't gonna ease up off her. Right. We've been friends for way longer than I knew you. Why you hate her so much? Right. Right. I mean, it, and I get it. If like, it's most likely, like, if you got the broke friend, like, it's only but so many times you're going to lend money, right? Right, right? But, like, yeah, it's like, why the fuck are you on a case like that? Why you keep yeah. bringing this up? And yeah, vice yeah, versa, yeah. your significant other is talking, no, oh, your, your friend. friend is talking bad on your significant other. Yeah, man. You got to you gotta protect what's yours. And they might be telling the truth, too. Yeah. Like, that bitch does lag a lot. Uh, she do always be driving your car. Like, your significant other is always driving your car? Like, I don't know. That's usually the guy, and it picks you up whatever, late. Whatever, yeah. whatever. That's or, usually or, the guy. Or pulls up to your to your your place of business, about to spray everybody up. He do be having you on the internet looking dumb, and I'm telling you that you look dumb on the internet with him. But you know you on the internet look dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do they be knowing that they looking dumb on the internet? Yes, bro. You know you look dumb on the internet. <laughs> yeah, because I don't you know. You look as dumb as everybody that took Christmas photos and those fucking uh, red and black lumberjacks. Yeah, basically. I mean, but that was kind of cool when people had on, like, the flannel pants and the white shirt. That was kinda, okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got for the scenarios. That was um, fun. It sounds like we're equal opportunity, friendship, relationship holders. That um, means we treat everybody fairly. It ain't well, nothing to, to cut, cut that, that bitch off. off. It ain't nothing. But I, I do want to put on record that I do hold my closest friendships and my relationships at the same same level facts like I, I just feel like I gotta I just I mean, like there's certain stuff that you know that okay of course like my significant other is gonna come first in these type of things but like I I don't know I just I, just, I really don't see other than the intimacy part like I feel like like no sex specifically. Well, sex in particular. The D and the like, V. Like, like I, like the I D think and the D and the V. Like and the I, v. like if you if you take the physical part aside, I think I am intimate with both my friends and my significant others as much as I possibly can be. That nigga gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Got a dictionary. <laughs> No, but I mean, when we we literally wrote out a Venn diagram for this, and I'll just say it's. <laughs> It's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, the house, you'll share a house with your friends and your significant other. You'll support your friends and your relationship. You'll share stories about your past with your friends and your relationship. You laugh together. They're connected to your family. And you guys go on dates together. So it's pretty similar. Yeah. I, all I know I is that know. in 2020, TA it has PowerPoints and they have graphs and they have spreadsheets and, I'm sharing and shit. it. So be on the lookout. I'll share it with y'all. And if you've been, been honest, hey, shoot for 
the friendship and the friend, you can fuck. Okay. See, Be single and fuck them. Mix them together. Next All right. On Nick. Speaking of fucking. You are now tuned in. in. Like what you did there, that was fire. <laughs> uh, you are now tuned in to WMEZ, where the W stands for Wood. This week we got K, uh, Cash K. Cash K with the song Options here on WMEZ. Textually active. You beat me up when I was falling. I picked it up when you was calling. But you acting like I ain't got options. Don't play with my heart or I'm gonna stop this. I picked you up when you was falling. And you picked it up when I was calling. But you acting like I ain't got options. Don't play with my heart or I'm gonna stop this. I know this pussy far from dry. Just like a faucet, get him high. And then we take off like the rockets. The connection that we got is the main topic. I see you got it, heard your ex. Cause she be stalking. She know your girl like a puppy. Bringing his money against the baby. That was Cash K with Options. Cash K with Options. If you like that joint, it has been added to you, baby. Make a playlist. If you want to hear it, be sure to go to your favorite streaming platform, type in Textually Active Podcast, and look for Baby Maker of the Week by Textually Active Podcast. And that is your Baby Maker of the Week here on WMEZ. Textually Active. Wood. All right, pull y'all memes out. It's meme time. Luckily, I found a meme that goes with the episode, um, and it just goes back to me being an equal opportunity friendship relationship holder. And it goes, I will unfriend, uncousin, unfollow, uncoworker, a draining soul real quick. So it don't matter what your title is, you can get snip snip. They should have put that, uh, that coworker at the top. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> usually I'm unprepared, but I have two. Oh yeah. shit! All right, Nick, you coming sure you want to save one for next week? Nick, well, nah, that's coming. Funny. Coming in the new year, ready. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. All right, first one kind of goes along with what we talked about today, and is don't let your ego get in your way of your healing. All right. Oh. oh. So when you kind of have these like reason why you got to cut people off and all that stuff like that, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you just you know try to like cut them off and not talk to them and try to figure things out or get closure. You know, a lot of times I can fuck you up. Oh, shit. That's true. All right. And the other one, another one. All right. 2032, guys. It's going to be my year. Just you wait. I like it. 2032? Yeah, yep. I like it. All right. I like it. Uh, I guess I'll round this out. Close this thing on out. Uh, Mine is the way you should look at 2020. I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work like that. So I stole a bike and asked God for forgiveness. mm well, all right, and there you have it. Shabala Honda. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to go after you, what you want. Take your time, and preacher. Ask for forgiveness after you did something yeah. that you, you don't ask for wrong. permission. Ask for forgiveness. It's Shout out for to ask for forgiveness, especially if you fucking with one of us. In God. <laughs> Just yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of Sexually Active. You can find us on YouTube. We got some videos up. If you tired of listening, you want to see some action, we here I on YouTube. I thought you see some ass. At what you trying to do? I think. Podcast. The link oh. is in our bio. You can find us on Instagram at Sexually Active Pod. You can find us on OnlyFans. Twitter. Dot com slash, oh. uh, OnlyFans <laughs> at Sexually Act Pod. <laughs> and we recorded this in Open Media Lab. Pornhub. You can find their page. Com Por- slash. We're not on Pornhub. We are not on Pornhub. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Keep now, up with us during the week. Um, Mizi, if you want to start OnlyFans, I support you. Niggas are always talking That's about going for, for the bag, but don't want to go for the bag. I'm saying. Oh, guys, and be on the lookout is. for our lives. OnlyFans, We be going live. Sweet meat. Follow our live. Come on to our live. If no, nobody got that, I'm going to get it now. <laughs> Sweet meat. Yeah. Fire. All right, guys. I'll see y'all next Tuesday. Goodbye. <sighs> Thank you for listening to the Textually Active Podcast. This podcast is a full-service production from the Open Media Lab. Be sure to check in every Textual Tuesday along with following them on all social media at Textually Active Pod. Textually Active is a part of the Open Media Network.